Art is one thing. It can be created, it makes its statement, but you have to have the viewer that is the other half of the process. It is an exchange, it's a, it's a feeling that's presented. Seeing and feeling are the same. I'm specifically interested in what you can do that tells us new information about how to see visually, how we perceive our world, how we think. driven by by our our experience and our desires i think that the things as a child the idea of play i think each artist uh, continues that sense of play and excitement and investigation because of a memory of an earlier experience i'm very much a person that believes in experience informs the choice. I think that we have some kind of understanding of the way things move and come together, and I'm involved with this understanding, this idea of the frozen moment or the frozen gesture with the material. The work at MIT, the architects had never seen polyurethane used structurally in this manner. They didn't know that it could be done. And what I was doing basically is learning that when you pour against the wall, even if it would be a sheetrock wall, you could pour in such a way that structurally it could adhere to the wall and actually reach out into space 17 and a half feet the human scale but still they will look gargantuan the reason it was human scale is each pore was a human size take it down for her real quick large um, cantilever poured installations are just astonishing i mean that within a year or a year and a half, she did this series of monumental in scale um, installations that are both, um, you know, formally and experientially just not like anything else. They're abstract, but there's certainly references to things in the world, in the natural world. Um, you know, they're almost it's like some kind of a science fiction, like, um, you know, being in caves or um, you don't quite know where you are. When you see it, um, this abstract form, when she deal with the many different uh, material, is something within us that I don't know what it is. It's something very abstract and something very prehistoric for me. She introduced the notion of time 
because they, certain of these uh, series where she use a phosphorescent pigment. Mm -hmm. So when you turn off the light, it's, it's become like uh, science fiction, yes. glooming, uh, green stuff. And, and so it's on and off. The painting is never on and off. Uh, why she stopped doing them, you know, is, is interesting also, although she certainly kept some of the same elements. They were meant to be specific to those spaces. You know, they were meant to be a total environment, and so you had the experience only, you know, the people who could actually be in those spaces. The Modern Museum in Chicago, they wanted me to do a piece, but I just couldn't wear art on my sleeve. I didn't want to do show, you know, it's such a great museum, uh, museums there, but particularly in Chicago, I just couldn't go and do another installation. I just couldn't do another two. I didn't feel like I could see. I, I, it was too painful to go on with it and to push myself in an area I didn't need to push anymore. I knew what I could do. I had already made the works at MIT. I stopped making those pieces and began to work in my studio until I thought of making this idea of this fountain. I actually envisioned the idea of the four pieces long before I even did the first wave in a print that I did in Chicago. And I had a form in the center that held the pieces up. And this is unique in that the pieces are held by their own floating above the water. But the idea of having a north, south, east, west occurred to me sometime, I think, in the late 70s. Logic actually was my first uh, real break with thinking and that I realized for me that art could be a kind of logical development and it could be something that was an original statement. To discern information through a verbal means was not my way. So that's why I chose to become an artist taking logic certainly allowed me, once I arrived in New York, to break down the systematic approach that was occurring. I could see it as a progression of uh, questions, visual questions about what, what was surface about, what the frame was about, what the process was about. But I still had questions when I came to New York, where painting should go? Should it go back to Cezanne's? If you go to looking at the early chord pieces, she was obviously taking on Jackson Pollock. I mean, there's no question about that. So I think in terms of her being a young woman artist, so it was both her generation as well as her, as her gender. And she was saying, you know, I'm gonna acknowledge what he did and this history of male artists, but I'm doing what I'm doing. And, and you know, I don't think you can separate that from, from her understanding. 
because we all know this image of Pollock painting on the floor, putting the canvas on the floor with the dripping the thing. But afterwards, it, it's become an object. I mean, the, the canvas has been stretched and put on the wall. And she said, why, why don't we, we stay on the floor? <laughs> why do we have to stretch the whole thing and again put it on the wall like any other traditional painting? Ironically, she was also quoting the, the, the woman tasks in the house, like uh, sweeping the floor, washing the floor. And I think it's very, very funny and very, very sharp. The way she had to pour those things also with those big cannons with, uh, with paint in it and then, and then making that gesture, uh, already that is pinpointing how far you can go as, as a woman physically and, and it's almost a counterpoint of the, the throwings with lead of Richard Serra who, who is very brutal and very aggressive uh, dealing with that and if you if you see how she pours those things it's it's becoming almost a, a kind of ballet or a kind of, of very uh, beautiful way also the performative part It's interesting that her work, you know, when she did sculpture or whatever, is, is always abstract. And yet in these other areas, in video and the photo pieces, that she really does use herself and allows her individuality to be seen. It's, it's kind of an interesting dichotomy, I think. I think with something like the photo pieces that she was very aware of herself as a woman. I, I think you can't talk about that work without talking about feminism with it. I don't think she wanted to limit the definition of what, what being a woman artist is or what a feminist is. I didn't think I'm going to make feminist art. I really didn't think that way. I, I really was responding and, and some people may criticize me for that. But I wasn't thinking, this is feminist propaganda, all women make this kind of art. No, I was, I was saying, I was mocking it. I was saying, you know, women are pretty, women make pretty art, therefore, you know, all art women make is pretty, you know? So I wasn't interested in these closed systems at all. such a self-conscious time and and I was not involved with quotas I was not involved with going to meetings I was not involved with rules rules are made to be broken she's still an iconic figure for the the, the seminal thing she did in 74 for the art forum and it's still in the memory of everybody even if the younger generation they never seen this uh, this magazine and these pages because also physically it's gone in, in a, any library that uh, ever collecting the, the art forum issues most of the time this this precise issue has been the page has been uh, torn off there has been a reaction, I think, to a certain degree against theory. And I think that Linda is so physical in her work. You know, her work is really about using material. Um, she brings out qualities in the material that have to do with her personal way of working. To bring back color is just astonishing. You know, things that you don't think are radical. She's very free, even the... the I mean, she, she, you know, we, we know which can be very uh, glittering and very, uh, to a point maybe vulgar, I don't know, the kitschy, but she's not afraid. 
it all integrates as a part of her work. So this I is think also the glitter. I think that's a feminist issue also. Absolutely, I mean, that's Absolutely. definitely a girly thing to use yeah, glitter. But I think it was consciously bringing something back into yes. art that was yes. missing. The situation in Dublin presented itself, I began to think very freely. It was such an ideal location and it is such an ideal location. And I just said, I'm going to do this. event that's very mysterious that comes from the bowels of the earth. And they also symbolize something, a kind of celebration of where we come from, our own kind of history. named it North, South, East, West because of the four directions and the fact that I would like to actually communicate to the world culture. The addition of the idea of water, I think, brings it that much closer to an interrelationship with the viewers. This is the first time that I've actually created four bronzes that interrelate. And it's important that they have a sequence of events, so to speak. Uh, and these events are frozen in time, but they're also moving with the water. the performer. The water is the performer. The fountain is an object. I don't think of it as a theatrical event. It's something more permanent in the mind. It's a configuration that is prehistoric in a sense, that plays on our unconscious, that can be interpreted in any way but I'm really involved with icons. Icons that can be kind of conceived and brought into the mind and meditated and contemplated. We need situations of repose that invite us into ourselves and meditation. And we need something that reminds us of our very early experiences. Mm -hmm. 